You're tuned in to The Keetra Show and listening to SOB, Style of Business. The podcast with your host, Keetra. We aim to highlight the ongoing trek of entrepreneurs and business owners from around the globe, featuring stories that recount their struggles, experiences, and inevitable road to success and self-fulfillment. Welcome to SOB. This episode is supported by the wonderful creators of Gratitude Plus app, the app that helps you cultivate a daily practice of gratitude. What are you grateful for today? You can download the app now at the App Store or by visiting gratitudeplusapp.com forward slash style of business. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for tuning in for another hot episode of SOB Style of Business, the podcast. This is your host, Keetra, and today I have another special guest. I am speaking to the wonderful educator, youth mentor, community activist, Um, and just somebody who has a wealth of information and knowledge when it comes to higher education. I'm speaking to the wonderful Dr. Stephen Jones. He is the president of SAJ Publishing, and he is also the associate dean of students at Villanova University. Uh, He's going to be visiting visiting with us for a while to discuss uh, some different resources and uh, the things that he's doing in in regards to helping uh, parents and, and also students get additional information when it comes to college and, uh, you know, just better study habits. So I think this is going to be a great conversation for anyone who's listening. Definitely can't wait to to get this one rolling. So let's not delay any longer. Dr. Stephen Jones, thanks so much for being a guest. Please give us a brief introduction and we will roll right forward from there. Well, I'm really excited to be a part of this program today because education is a priority um, and is a priority throughout my life. And one of the things that I think is really important is preparation to be successful as you have these educational goals. That's as I work with the idea of going to college is not just um, something that happens in high school. It happens from birth and all the preparation that's associated with that. So I hope I can get some tips and strategies that will help students and help parents as we go along in this conversation. Wonderful. Yeah. And I, I had a chance to go through your, your background and, and bio. And I know that your parents really instilled the importance and value of education. And, and, you know, you got a lot of good information there when you were a child and even, you know, up into getting your, your doctorate degree. And I, one of the questions that I had for you specifically was like, you know, once you went through the, the um, you know, you did the college, you know, because a lot of people start, stop at, at the bachelor's, you know, um, yeah. but you chose to continue your education and just uh, curious as to your inspiration behind wanting to get the doctorate, and, and in addition to that, like what led you to also kind of reach back and, and help other students and kids that are coming up and getting their uh, degrees as well? Well, it's a really interesting story because I um, I was involved, in, the, like you said, in my community even as a young person, and I wanted to give back to them. So one of the ways that I felt I could do that is by giving the mo- getting the most education that I possibly could. And um, I went off to college as the first person in my family to go to college, not knowing a lot. In fact, uh, I guess a little story there is um, my advisor, um, the major I was studying, even though I work with engineering students all the time, that's my my main emphasis in the college, um, my advisor said to me, are you going to graduate school? And I said, graduate school, what is that? So it was all new. And it's not something that my parent could have taught me because they – they did complete high school, but it hadn't gone any further than that. So um, I just say out there to all those students who are going to be the first in their family to go to college that it's well worth it. And going even beyond that, spending the additional two years to get a master's degree or a doctor's degree um, can open many doors. And I think that was your uh, question, Katria, that um, as we talk about why I've been involved um, I knew I could have a bigger impact by having a doctor degree. Now, that doctor degree did take five years to make happen. Oh, wow. But I, as I say to students, those five years are going to go by whether you like it or not. And you might, you know, take your time yeah. to take advantage of that opportunity to get it done. And if you do it, the younger you do it, um, it's out of the way and you're going to have 20, 30 years to actually work with the knowledge that you have. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's pretty profound. And I, I'm specifically also interested in what you just mentioned. You, you said that you were the first to go to college. So when you, you know, received your bachelor's and someone introduced the prospect of graduate school, you know, you, you were like, OK, what what is that? Um, which brings me to my question. 
you know, with you being the first to get started and, you you know, not really having the knowledge of knowing what the next steps would be. What about those students who are finishing high school, you know, and maybe they are they don't know the next steps to because uh, because most of the times it, it comes down to the financial aid and things like that. But maybe they don't know how to go about the application process and this and that. Like, how do they get started? Like, what's a, a good first step? Yeah. OK, so there are two steps. One the experience that you're having in high school is preparing you for what's going to show up on the application. So if you're a student that's done really well, um, you'll have a GPA that will show that you'll actually submit with your application because you've been doing well in school. Um, but in addition to that, you want to be a well-rounded student. So you want to be that student that's involved in different organizations, uh, taking on some leadership roles, uh, I have had some students start their own little businesses, all those things that dis- distinguish you as you apply to colleges. And it's important to actually start visiting colleges in the ninth grade, that you actually go out and see some of the colleges and talk to some of the faculty and some of the students, because that will also drive you toward that goal, like seeing those who look like yourself actually out there earning degrees and talking to them gives you the inspiration to keep your grades high to do well in the SAT or um, uh, the ACT test that comes out. That comes out, yeah. And yourself. And then there's yeah. something, when you get to the uh, 12th grade to apply, there's now something called the common application. And that's an application where you fill out one application and you're able to submit it to several colleges at one time. There's one that's called the, it's just the general college application form, but there's also the HBCU uh, college application. So that, that will go out to all the historic black colleges and universities. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, that common application would have really been of, <laughs> of help, you know, yes. you know, to, to keep from having to do uh, all of the different submission forms and the, the fees as well. Um, how much research is involved when it comes to you know, really narrowing down the college that, that you might be interested in? Because sometimes people, you know, hey, just apply, you know, just apply to a school. I mean, should it really just be that simple to where you just apply to any school? Or how much research should go into really narrowing down the, the colleges that you're interested in? I think a lot of research should go into it because you're making a big investment in yourself and in your future, and you want to have uh, selected a college that fits you, that a lot of students, what they'll do is they'll say, I'm interested in um, electrical engineering and in Pennsylvania. So mm-hmm. being specific like that, and you'll put that in Google, and it'll present to you all the colleges in Pennsylvania that offer that kind of curriculum. And then it's a matter of how big of a college you want to attend, how small of a college you want to attend, um, what the cost of the college is. That's a big element in that, what the cost is and also what that college will provide in terms of financial aid for you to be able to afford it. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Uh I'm just, that's a lot of things to consider. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, just the the importance of what I'm saying to, to students really recently is making sure that you know how much money you'll have for the four years of college. Because what I've seen is that students will, um, have a scholarship that's ten thousand dollars, but it's only for the first year of college. It doesn't continue after the first year of college, and then it kicks in that they had to find ten thousand dollars, and their parents don't have the funding to do that. So you need to have like a serious conversation with the financial aid office and with your parent about what you can afford for four years, not just the first year. Oh goodness, yeah, that's that's definitely a game changer when it comes to just making the right decision. And, and speaking of funding and the financial aid aspect of it, you know, you have the loans, you have the student grants, you have the work study. Can you touch a little bit on those different uh, options? And also, uh, I want to talk about the, there's a, a federal, uh, I think it's called the, the FAFSA. Right. And just kind of giving some information on how that ties into all of this, because, you know, sometimes these students apply and then you know, there's a lot of different options to consider, but if you could just touch on the, the, the loans, the grants, and then also, I know you just mentioned the scholarships, and then uh, maybe the work study, that would be great. Okay. So the FAFSA is a federal financial aid um, 
form that every student has to do. And the wonderful thing that's different today than when I went to college is that um, you will do your taxes by April the 15th. So your taxes will already be done for 20 from last year. So they'll already be done. Then in October, the FAFSA application for financial aid for college will be available. Now you can just take your taxes, which are already completed, and submit them with your FAFSA form. And all of the colleges use the FAFSA as part, a major part of how they decide how much money they can give to you as a student along with your parents' income. Um, so as, as a foundational part, you can start with making sure that you get that done. A second part, point is that there, there are student loans that are available and just have to make wise decisions and about what you can afford. Because if you're taking out, for example, $20,000 a year, by the time you graduate, now you have an $80,000 loan that's not going to go away. So can you truly afford that? You know, what's the real possibilities of that? Uh, work studies is, is not a lot of money. It's, you can work 15 to 20 hours a week and make minimum wage, or some universities are giving more dollars now, which is wonderful. But you can actually work 15 to 20 hours a week on campus, um, and actually you can take it off campus if uh, someone will hire you to use that money. But um, it's just for basic items that you might need. It's not substantial. But applying for scholarships is where you can get a lot of money, and um, you need to apply for scholarships consistently throughout your junior and senior year, wherever it's an opportunity for you to submit something. If there are students who won $100,000 in scholarships because they kept applying, they kept applying, they never yeah. stopped applying. And um, the other point is once you get to college, you can also apply for scholarships because they want you to have a GPA, which is your grade average, in order to apply for the scholarship. So those scholarships want you to prove that you can get through the first year with a GPA, and then you can apply. Oh, wow. So yeah. there is there are billions of dollars of scholarships that go unused every year. So I tell students to make sure that you're applying, and that's one of the reasons why I wrote a scholarship book, because I wanted to give students and parents some steps that they can take toward um, getting those scholarships. And, and uh, I also say to the students, have a folder on your computer where you can put essays that you've written, and then when you're applying to different types of scholarships, you can just use that essay in different places. So uh, it, there's, there's much out there. And also the colleges themselves have their own scholarships, but you have to meet the deadline. I can't tell you how many times I've had students who are eligible for this money, but they were late applying for it at the college that they know they wanted to attend. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's a, a big issue. Um, I will also say community college is not a bad place to start if you look at your financial situation and that's what you can handle. But also, if you're a student that's been more of a, a CB student and you're just uncertain, instead of getting in a whole lot of debt and going to a four-year college, a two-year college is a better way to kind of make the adjustment, mature a little bit more, and then decide from there how far you want to go. That's great advice. Wonderful advice, Dr. Jones. And speaking of which, this this my next question come is coming up is uh, has to relate to you've applied, you've been accepted, you get started the first semester, first week, second week. Then things get real <laughs> with the with the exams and the you know the studying and just trying to keep pace with uh, your hours. Can you touch on what would be a good uh, place to start. I know it just depends on the student as far as how many hours they can do per semester. But uh, one of the reasons why I want to talk about this is because you have a guide which helps you know students learn how to study. You know different study habits, and it also um, there's some supplements that you have in, in regards to this too uh, material, which is the Parents Ultimate Education Guide, and then you just talked about the Ultimate Scholarship Guide. But as far as the study guide. When the students get started and they're in a, a new environment and they um, are taking these different classes and things are a little bit more fast paced than they may have been used to in high school, like give us some tips and just just some background information on how the adjusting process and all, you know, just whatever you can offer in that regard. Yeah. No problem. So one of the 
big areas that affect a lot of the students who are going through their first or second semester of college is time management. The difference between high school and college is that you have more freedom in your schedule to operate um, uh, either in the whole idea of just having fun or the whole idea of studying. And a rule that I give to the students, so you're going to take 15 hours worth of classes during, for the most part, during most curriculum, 15 hours worth of classes. For every hour that you're in class, you should do two hours of study so that it becomes like having a job because you're going to be studying. You have time in your class, 15 hours, but you're going to do 20 to 30 hours of studying throughout the week to read books, to prepare for projects and quizzes and tests, um, to do to their papers that may have to be written. So all of that takes time. And if you want to submit it in a quality way, you have to really prepare and not uh, do what a lot of high school students, which is procrastinate <laughs> and yeah, wait to the exactly. last minute. I say to the students, are you in the procrastinators club? And they all raise their hands. <laughs> right. And I'm like, you know, that's something that you have to work on and mature in all throughout college because those who can manage their time and not procrastinate get better grades. Um, those who meet with the faculty, Definitely. A lot of students are just, because they're freshmen, they're afraid to meet with the faculty. But the faculty have office hours. And the purpose of office hours is for you to ask questions that weren't answered during class, to ask questions about quizzes and tests that come up, to, get, to ask about things that the professors have written so you can have more knowledge about how they're thinking as you're taking tests. So make the professors your friend and your connection to continue to do well in each class. And then don't let pride get in the way of you going for tutoring. Yeah. I've seen so many students. That's, how, that's why they ended up dropping out, because they never went to go get a tutor, because they never needed one in high school. Like, it's a sign of weakness for me to go get a tutor. And I will say that students who are earning A's and B's, they're going to get tutoring. Oh, wow. So it's a wise student that takes advantage of the tutoring and meeting with the faculty and reading um, before class, that's another point. It's like make sure that all your assignments are read before you go to class because then there's something there for the instructor to give you and you can formulate more questions because you have some knowledge going into the class. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's some good information to have. And Dr. Jones, you have three different guides. You want to uh, touch on those a bit? Sure. So uh, I have a, a, the first book that I wrote is called Seven Secrets of How to Study because I learned that so many people don't have good study skills. And I wanted to give them some strategies on how to manage their time, how to prepare for a test or a quiz, how to read effectively, how to organize yourself when um, you're going through a semester or while you're in middle school or high school. And that's one of my goals also was to equip middle school and high school students on how to study so when they ended up at college, they could actually have a good foundation for studying. And I put all that, how do you relate to an instructor that's in there and that book? And there's a lot of resources in the back of it on uh, different study books and strategies that you can use to be uh, a well-rounded student. Um, I also actually have a list of, of classes that students should take in high school if, it if you're interested in college. But I will say not every student's going to go to college. Some students go to trade school. You yeah. still have to study. So, so it is yeah, a good true. book for that student. <laughs> right. Yeah, so it, it has wide application for studying. I've even had some parents, they're taking a test. They want to learn how to study. So it has some pretty broad, it's easy to read, and it's practical exercises in that book. Then the second book is uh, for the parents. This is basically birth through 12th grade. What do I do as a parent? to help my child do well in school. And I just finished an actual online course that parents can take that will help them to effectively improve their student performance in school. And it's a self-paced course that they can take as well. Um, and then I have the scholarship book, which just tells you how to get access to over $90 million in scholarships that are available. How do you apply? How do you organize yourself? Uh, what are financial aid officers want you to do? what foundations do, what corporations do. So there's millions and millions of dollars out there of scholarships. And um, I'm actually going to take the, these, those two books, the study skills book and the scholarship book. I want to each have a course for each of those as well. So I'm going to be working okay. over those 
in the next few months. But the parents, one is done. Um, the others are on their way. And I just want to give more um, of a different approach to learning how to study, to learn how to be the best parent that you can be and to finding the money to send your, college, your son or daughter to the college of their choice. Exactly. Yeah, well, I, the more information, the merrier. So you cannot uh, be opposed to anything that's going to help you get a leg up. And, and speaking of which, um, where can, if anybody's listening, where can we grab the books and the, the different guides that you have available in the, your online courses? Do you have a, a website? Yes, so they can go to drstephenjones.net, and that's D-R-S-T-E-P-H-E-N-J-O-N-E-S.net, and they can click on the book tab, and that will take them to the place where they can place an order. Excellent, Dr. Jones. Well, before we wrap up, uh, if you would please leave us some words of encouragement, maybe there, uh, and, and I don't want this to be just for the students that are getting ready to you know, transition to, to college. Uh, maybe there's an adult that is looking to go back to college or finish up or whatever. Leave us with some words of encouragement or some advice that you would give to somebody that's uh, getting started. Okay. Uh, one thing I want to do is just give them my number in case they want to reach me. So if oh, it's sorry. okay, I can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so they can reach me at 610-842-3843. Words of encouragement, I will say um, all things are possible. But you have to get started. All things are possible, but you have to get, get started. started. Yeah, <laughs> right. So um, I have known students who have said, "I'll get, you know, I'll, I'll get myself prepared. I'll get myself together." But then three months go by. Then six months mm. go by. So you have to start. For a student, you should be meeting with your counselor uh, from day one when you're in high, middle school, high school, asking them questions, getting information, gathering, uh, making sure you're attending seminars and events that are, that are happening at the school, being an engaged student. And though I encourage you, I've seen students who um, have no one in their family that's completed college and have no one in their family, in some cases, that even have finished high school. And I've seen students go on to get their degrees uh, out of that. I've seen students go on to start their own businesses or um, to open up with, and get involved in the trades. So all things are possible, but you got to take the first step and you got to believe that you can do it consistently. Uh, for myself, I, you know, for me, it's a faith walk, believing that God is with me and God is with you yeah. to do and accomplish some great and unique things in your life. And just never give up. As long as you have breath, there's an opportunity. There's an opportunity. Beautiful words, Dr. Jones. We definitely appreciate it. And also, I forgot to ask, uh, if we can connect, if there's ways for us to connect with you on social media, definitely leave your social media handles as well. Uh, yeah, so if they put in Dr. Stephen Jones, I'm everywhere on Instagram. I'm Stephen Jones with a second. It says S-T-E-P-H-E-N-J-O-N-E-S-S. But everyone else, where else, LinkedIn, Facebook, all the other social net networks. I'm Dr. Stephen Jones. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Jones, for joining us. We truly appreciate all the wonderful information and look forward to touching base with you here uh, as we continue the year. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Thanks for hanging out with us here on SOB. We hope this episode has been resourceful. If you'd like to check out the latest articles or follow Keetra's website updates, just log on to Keetra.com or follow her on Twitter at K-E-E-T-R-I-A.